it, <laughs> after <laughs> after a board, be like, hey, I got a real good idea. I got a real good idea. We're gonna build a house. Where are we gonna build a house? Doesn't matter where. We gotta have a place to gamble. It doesn't have to be nice. It could be a shack for all I care. Yeah, but where are we gonna build the house? Don't worry about it. We're gonna build it a mile off the coast in the ocean. In the ocean? Eddie, you can't build a house in the ocean. We'll put it on stilts. We'll put it on stilts. How are we gonna do that? That bastard figured it out. Welcome back to another episode of the Social Drinkers Podcast podcast <laughs> podcast where we talk about the art, the science, and the industry of drinking. I Hello, think that my cast, co-hosts. Podcast <laughs> is a solid definition of what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> the the combination of a party and a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> It's a party speaking of our yeah, speaking of our party podcast, what uh what did you guys bring to drink today? Mitch, you go first. What did I bring to drink today? I'm actually clearing the fridge. I am back to the Great Lakes oatmeal stout, the Ohio City oatmeal stout. Um, had a couple of them left and wasn't really feeling up to making a cocktail or having a liquor tonight. So I'm just back with the stout. But I did I did give it a nice pour. That way I can enjoy the aromas of the beer what about you kate fair enough i again am cleaning out the wine bottles so i am drinking the last of our noble vines cabernet i haven't tasted it yet so hold on okay that is not good <laughs> <laughs> we it, it tastes like expired or something it probably it's is sat expired. too long yeah it's probably it's sat way too long that's funny well there you go folks <laughs> that is why you drink your wine quickly <laughs> yeah don't i mean we try not to let it sit but i think we had people over or something and we opened a bottle of wine and then i mean i drank it. that one on a couple podcasts ago so that thing's been sitting there for a minute oh yeah oh yeah Oh right. yeah, she's right. <laughs> so my my drink for the day is gonna lead us into our first topic. Ooh. And that Let's is going go. to be this right here. What the heck is that? <laughs> it's blue. That will be yes, that will be explained. So <laughs> University of Massachusetts this week. 28 ambulance. <laughs> 28 ambulance calls, right? Why? These are all calls to off-campus parties, and the what they claim is the reason, and I would agree, um, is what they call a Borg, and a Borg is a blackout rage gallon, oh. <laughs> and I don't know if this was a thing when you were in college or not, but uh, this has been around for some time now. They make it sound new in the news and it's not it's been around for at least a year um and it is you take an empty milk jug and you can go buy like milk jugs of water at the store whatever you pour out most of it and then it is a mix of vodka water and typically a caffeinated drink or something along the lines of like mio and you literally Mm -hmm. pour it in there and you shake it up and the dangerous part is Anything less than a fifth of vodka, you don't really taste any alcohol. So a lot of people go for a fifth. And you got to think that's 17, 18 shots. So you finish up a fifth of vodka in a couple hours. I could see how that would end up with an ambulance ride. Um, <laughs> today, the Today Show says we don't recommend drinking a Borg. I disagree, but would say drink responsibly. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> I respectfully <What>? disagree. <laughs> I it's quite tasty. I'm not gonna lie to you. This today is a mini Borg because I wanted to show you what it was without um, getting 
smacked on the podcast. <laughs> How does it taste? It's fantastic. And that's yeah. what so I was what, show you. Yeah, what's is, in your board? And here's vodka, water, and a Mountain Dew Berry Blast energy drink. Interesting. And it's literally like you can drink it like a like a soda. It's great. Are you going to be going to a party tonight or are you just going to be drinking a Borg and then chilling? Well, luckily that's not a full Borg. So there's only oh. a couple of shots in there. Oh, oh okay. that's good. Yeah. But I will be drinking but it's, with a couple it's, friends tonight. Not a party. Okay. But. <laughs> it's, it's the energy drink that's more concerning to me. Oh, no. It's, you know, it's great. <laughs> okay. Well, we talked about it with the monster monster releasing their new malt beverage and it's the caffeine, caffeine with alcohol sucks man i don't know how you're doing that that hangover is nasty afterwards i don't feel any different after four beers or a glass of this a glass in of mor- borg in the, mo- in the morning <laughs> yeah the uh but it's this is technically not a borg because it's not in a gallon jug that's how you will, you will know Got it. you will know when you see a Borg because there is a gallon jug. Typically, people will write some sort of um, funny name on them. Okay. I don't have any examples, but they'll incorporate the word Borg into the name for their jug. Mm. And there's one solid excuse for having a Borg, and it is you're getting fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that that is funny i will say about the hangover thing i did not start getting hungover until i hit like 23 24 mm. and i used to you know rage rage and, she would have been a and, borg machine <laughs> <laughs> and i never got hungover and i was always like i don't know how people get hungover i just drink some water before i go to bed and i'm not hungover and then i turned 23 and it was like slap <laughs> slap <laughs> yeah i will oh. say the older you get the worse that hangover gets but i did always say in college i got hungover and i always said that the people who didn't get hungover just didn't drink enough because i never had the issue of not getting hungover people really? will claim <laughs> people will claim that the water in the borg will oh. fight the caffeine oh no 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 mm mm uh, Don't I take can, that advice. <laughs> I can genuinely tell you that it doesn't help because you're down in a fifth of vodka and at most eight hours. So well, it's just too much. Do you know <laughs> do you know what a hyper viper is? I don't. Okay. So you said I feel like these have been around and now they're just on the news. I feel like everywhere just has their thing or every generation of college kid has the thing that becomes really popular. Because when I was in college and Kate and I were in college, the hyper Viper was popular where you would take a 40 and you would drink it down three quarters of the way. And then you'd fill that up with a four loco and shake it together and drink it. And dude, the sugar and the alcohol and the malt and everything in there would just wreck your soul. I mean, I've seen Tyler yeah. sob crying so many times after a hyper viper. <laughs> Edward forty hands, where you duct oh, tape yeah. two I've of those of that. to each of your hands, and then you had to drink it to get it. So, off your hands. to say the least, this has been sweeping the nation. Um, on TikTok, the hashtag Borg has ninety nine million views. Wow, and is only going upwards from there. Kate, did we have anything in college like a Borg that I can't remember? I, I remember Hyper Vipers were popular. Obviously, Jungle Juice, but that's always been and always will be a thing. Did we have a, a, a Borg? No. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think we ever had anything like that. I will. I don't know if this was common, but my roommates did it. I never did because as we mentioned on the last podcast, I can't drink beer, but they would put Mio in their beer Mm. in like a light beer. And so that way it would, I don't know if it would mask the taste of the beer or what it would do. (laughs) But when you said Mio, my roommates used to put Mio in their like light beer. That is Mio has grown into a very large contender for, for the Borg 
industry that has that is beginning in- <laughs> the Borg industry, industry. <laughs> someone needs to trademark that name the booming <laughs> Borg industry that is hysterical Kate what did you bring this week what do you got on the docket so there is this place it is 10 miles off the coast of Miami and it is mm. called Stiltsville have you guys heard of Stiltsville? Of course. I have not. All we right. heard it. Oh, go ahead. We heard it what? I was to say, we heard about it together while we were in Miami. Yes. So Mitch and I went on a trip to Miami and we were sitting at the bar and these this couple was sitting next to us and they were asking us, you know, what we were doing and stuff. And we were we just had a really chill Miami vacation. We literally just ate and went to bars and laid on the beach we didn't really do too many touristy things in Miami and they were telling us about this place called Stiltsville and like I said 10 miles off the coast of Biscayne Bay in Miami it is these houses on stilts and the reason that they're there they're now abandoned but the history behind this is that in the 1930s so there's again, we talked about this on the last podcast, but there is a little bit of a he said, she said situation going on here. So sources claim that the stilt shack was built in the 1930s, but some Dade County historians say that it dates back as early as 1922, which is relevant because prohibition started in 1920 and it ended in 1933. Mm. So some say it was built during the prohibition time. Some say it wasn't. Who really knows? But just take that with a grain of salt. I bet the but person who built it knows. <laughs> I'm sure bet. they do. <laughs> so the story goes, at the end of the prohibition, someone named Eddie Walker, who went by crawfish because in his shack, he would make a crawfish meal. And it, he was known for this crawfish meal that he had in his shack. He built the very first shack a mile off the coast. And he built it for gambling because for some reason, gambling was legal only if it was a mile off the coast. So he just literally went and built a house <laughs> a mile off the coast so he could go gamble <laughs> it became super super popular and so everyone started popping up and building their own houses off the coast and it turned into a bunch of different things some were bikini clubs boat clubs um they just like different clubs basically it's just a big conglomerate of clubs and it was really for like the rich and wealthy people and it really got it going in the 40s and 50s. It was their escape to go for a hard party weekend. And it was also a haven for rum runners coming from the Caribbean and dropping off the rum off the coast of Florida and then them bringing it back. It's now gone, which it ended in 1965 because of Hurricane Betsy. And apparently the city did not like that this was going on because after Hurricane Betsy, the state of Florida required building owners to pay $100 annually to lease their quarter acre circular campsites is what they called it. And then no permits for new construction were issued and structures that contain that sustained more than 50% damage couldn't re- be rebuilt. So essentially it was the county, the state's way of saying we're getting rid of this and there's only a few of them that remain now they're all kind of decrepit but you can go there and do tours and stuff when you're in Miami there's like boat tours Uh, I actually looked up how much it costs it's $66 a passenger they run Thursday through Saturday they're about three hours Um, and you uh, dock out of the Dinner Key Marina in Coconut Grove Florida So I'll have that linked in case you're in the Miami area or you're going and you want to check this out, but it's on my bucket list. It looks really cool. The pictures and stuff looks fun. It does look fun. Something I would be curious about, about these houses and this circular campsite that they are leasing or owning. Are they leasing it or are they owning it? Could you, do you know? (laughs) <laughs> so ori- originally i don't know i don't know okay. i think he just went and built it and then there's probably no law against him building it and yeah. then 
this, the state, the county, I don't know who regulates this. They were probably like, oh, shoot, we have no law against this. And then after the hurricane, they totally nixed this whole entire thing and made it nearly impossible for this to continue. So something I've learned through fishing in the river is houses that own sections of a river only own the bed of the river. So if you float down it, you can fish there because you're not trespassing because you're not standing on their property. So I would be curious, and I'm sure this isn't a problem there because they're probably having a great time and they don't care. But if you're driving your boat over their circular campsite, are you trespassing? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. You only own the bed of the river. If you, I wonder if that's the same for lakes or oceanfront. I'm not sure. Now I know that's that's in Ohio and a PA thing. So okay. I don't know if it's anywhere else. I haven't really had any experience outside of there, but huh. very, very interesting fact that I would be curious about in the ocean, how that works. Do you own that section of the ocean? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> weird. Uh, first of all, Stiltsville is the, mo- it's the most Miami thing I've ever heard. It, it's the most Miami thing I've ever heard in a town of degenerates. You know what we need? a place a mile off the coast to go be more degenerate. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm sure that's why there was a stop. A, there was a stop, but a stop put to this. Yeah. I feel like I'm not saying that right, but the yeah, you know Vegas. what I mean? Las Vegas of the sea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I think of is Tortuga. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Do you know what Tortuga is? Of course. I don't know what that is. And not Pir- a Pirates of the Caribbean connoisseur like us. <laughs> <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. Tortuga is the place that, what is it, Ray? You can, you know better than I. It is essentially a giant bar town, um, pubs, you know, pirate style pubs that you just go and there are no rules. <laughs> right. I knew that. I meant, can't you only find it if you're not looking for it or something like that? Isn't there something? I can't remember. That there's, sounds right. Like, there's some rule to <laughs> some it. Some Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. fan is going to be screaming into their phone like, this is what you're trying to think of. <laughs> yeah, there's some rule to it. Like, you can't find it unless you're not looking for it or something like that. Yeah, correct us because I know we're wrong on that one. But those are the two things I think when I hear of Stiltville. Well, three things. Number one, I want to go really bad. Same with me, Kate. Bucket list thing. Really cool. Um, and then for some reason, I also think of the guy from Captain Phillips that says, I'm the captain now. Um, I think of that guy for some reason, even though that's probably not really related to this. But uh, And then I think of Tortuga, and I think, how did Miami people need another place to party? Well, who knows? <laughs> this was in the 20s like, yeah, true. and 30s, so who even knows what Miami was back then? But the yeah. thing that I think of is why can you gamble a mile off the coast? (laughs) Like what? So I've heard of this before and I'm not going to try to say how far off the coast you have to be because I'll be wrong. And it may be different at other, at different places, but I know there's markers for where you get into international waters. And so a lot of people will go into international waters to commit crime because they're under no U.S. jurisdiction. But I don't think a mile qualifies as that. But maybe back then it did. I don't know. That's well, weird. Probably not because then the county wouldn't have been able to put those restrictions after the hurricane hit. True. Yeah. I, I don't know why it would have only been a mile. But I do know that people commit crimes in international waters all the time. So Maybe that guy thought that was international waters. I don't know. <laughs> this guy knew the law and the regulations, and he worked extra hard to get around it. So yeah, props. he really did. He said, yeah. I want to play cards for money, yep. and I am going to build a house to do it <laughs> in the on, ocean. On stilts in the ocean. <laughs> I, hey, I got an idea. I got an idea. This is what it would sound like after, like, after a Borg. 
It, after, <laughs> after a board, you be like, hey, I got a real good idea. I got a real good idea. We're going to build a house. Where are we going to build a house? Doesn't matter where. We got to have a place to gamble. It doesn't have to be nice. It could be a shack for all I care. Yeah, but where are we going to build the house? Don't worry about it. We're going to build it a mile off the coast in the ocean. In the ocean? Eddie, you can't build a house in the ocean. We'll put it on stilts. We'll put it on stilts. How are we going to do that? That bastard figured it out. Stiltsville, everybody. And the one thing he didn't think about was storms. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's the one thing nobody on the coast thinks about so did you imagine you're out there gambling and you're you're drinking drinking and i'm sure that you know 70s and 80s they were probably doing all sorts of other cool things out there <laughs> <laughs> well and, remember uh, it was gone in the 60s so no. oh you're right yeah okay my bad 60s not that much better no <laughs> beyond the point you're out there drinking and a storm starts coming in. Yeah. Where are you going? <laughs> Could be a problem. You better, better hunker down. <laughs> better hop in the dinghy. Get back there quick. No kidding. Yep. Have you guys seen the news about Napa Valley being rated the most expensive wine region in the United States? No. Okay. So... I was reading about the wine regions and to be fair, I wasn't digging in on this. I wasn't looking for this news, but the headline caught my eye and it said Napa Valley rated America's most expensive AVA, which I'm going to dive into what an AVA is because I think it's pretty interesting. But my thought when I saw the headline was, yeah, of course. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I don't know how that lands with you. Yeah, I figure I I would have figured if you would have asked me that it would 100% have been my answer. It would have definitely been up there. Yeah, that list. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I same. would think wait, is this in the I'm sorry, I miss is this in the United States or all over the world? Because I would have said Italy. And then I probably would have said like, maybe just some other places in Europe. And then maybe then Napa Valley, probably. In, in in the u.s so the, it's the most expensive in the u.s this wasn't for the world so yeah that would have been my guess or sonoma i mean mm-hmm. yeah and to be fair i didn't know what avas were prior to this and so what an ava is it's called an american or it stands for american viticultural area so a viticultural area is where they produce wine for commercial purposes and there are avas all over the United States, which I find really, really interesting. And so I took down some notes because I thought it was really cool. They compared a lot of the different AVAs. And so I pulled the cheapest AVA in America. Do you guys have any guess? You'll never get it, but take a guess at what state the cheapest AVA. And this is for a wine tasting and a bottle. So they're rating, what does it cost to go do a tasting and buy one bottle of wine? What do you, what state do you think has the cheapest AVA? I'm gonna go hometown and say Ohio. Oh, I was I was literally gonna say the same thing. <laughs> I know we have a lot of wineries here, and I would assume that they're probably pretty cheap. You're well, close, like Valley, comparatively. The Chagrin Valley is very big on wine. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you're close. It, it's actually in Illinois. Um, mm-hmm. so it's Shawnee Hills, in Illinois, is the cheapest AVA in America. Shawnee Hills has 20 wineries, almost 20 wineries. I'm looking at my notes and 55 vineyards that produce wine for commercial purposes. And take a guess at what it costs to go do a tasting and get one bottle of wine in Shawnee Hills in Illinois. $55. Yeah, I was, okay. was going to say 50. We're on the same page. <laughs> you guys are close. You guys are a little shy on the price, but it's only 75 bucks to go to a tasting and buy a bottle of wine from wow. the average winery in Shawnee Hills. That's no cheap. Yeah, I know. Really cheap. When you when you think like the nice bottle of wines we buy are like 35 bucks at the grocery. Right. Yeah. With a tasting and so you got someone guiding you through different types of wine and telling you about the notes and how to taste it and all that. I feel like that's a pretty good value. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on the flip side of that, how much do you think it costs to do this in Napa Valley on average? I'm going to say $2,200. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> not to, that's a little high. <laughs> I was gonna, I'm not exactly I was gonna, a connoisseur. <laughs> I was going to say $250. Okay. Kate's a little closer. Ray, 10x Kate's guess. I'm going all in. You know how much it costs to take people on vacation? A lot. A yes. lot. Yeah. I'm but surprised it's not that much. People will keep in mind, it, it's for one tasting in one bottle. Hey. So, um, but listen, it's on average $395. Oh my gosh, you don't that, even get food? No. Three well, I mean you probably get the little pieces of cracker to, Tasting, to yeah. cleanse your palate. The raisin that you get. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So I was blown away. 395 bucks to go to a tasting and get a bottle of wine. That is sweet. We're trying to plan a trip to Napa. We have to keep that in mind. Stiff. It's a stiff price to do the tasting in the bottle. I don't know what just the tasting costs. I don't know. They're saying on average, so I don't know what type of bottle on average people buy. But still, that is a pricey That's thing. Um, but California has some interesting wine statistics. Um, ran a Yoda question. So before we jump into that, you you say that, and then I think it would be worth knowing some of these California stats. Absolutely. But is that, I'm assuming that's per person. Yes. Like, okay. So if you take a group, I wasn't that far off. (laughs) That's true. That's That's true. true. If If, everybody buys a bottle. If you go on a family vacation, like you were saying, that's probably accurate. I mean, you think about it. If we all went, Mm -hmm. that's, you're looking at a lot of money. (laughs) It's pricey, dude. Pricey. But California is interesting. So I didn't, I mean, obviously they're a huge producer of wine. But if California were a country, they'd be the fourth largest wine producing country in the world. That's, That's how absurd. much wine California produces commercially. They would only sit behind Spain, France, and Italy. That's crazy. Wow. That is That's insane. a lot. Yeah. That's insane. And then I need to look for the number because this is actually crazy too. So California also consumes a lot of wine you all in california imbibe 156 million gallons of wine per year you drunks wow. <laughs> so that's actually funny because i was on a call with a prospect and she lives in california and she has a winery that she owns and she also is a dermatologist. And so we were talking about her dermatology business, but she was saying that she lives on a winery and her and her husband have done the wine thing for years now. And she, we were saying, Oh, you know, we can't imagine how much wine you drink. And she's like, you have no idea how much wine I drink so much wine. Like, (laughs) I, I mean, you, you know, like you're around it all day. You have all of this access to all of these things. I would be drinking a lot of wine. I love wine. Think of how much wine we drink when we were with my uncle. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, all the time. It's very, it gives a good explanation for why Johnny likes wine so much. He's a family friend of ours who, if you go have dinner with Johnny, you're having a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. He lived in California. It's a cultural thing. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. I mean, if you have access to the best wine, you're going to drink it. I mean, it's kind of like, think about Kate, when we lived in Nashville, I mean, how much bourbon do people consume? I, I don't know what the, what the numbers are when it comes to how much bourbon people consume in Tennessee or Kentucky, but a lot people drink it so much more down there than they do in Ohio. And so it is really a cultural thing, right? You're right. Something that I would be interested to see, and I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but they should do a map of the States and show what each state's most consumed alcohol is. Hmm. Because I would be interested That's to see what that is. Yeah, I bet it's they out do, there. They do country. So, you know, yeah. th- then there's the this stereotypical, you know, Russia drinks so much vodka and 
you know, oh, yeah. Ireland drinks so much whiskey and beer, but I would, I would actually be curious. I bet the Midwest would be full of beer. Oh yeah. <laughs> but like, no doubt. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. The Midwest. I mean, think about your Midwest drinking cities. You've got freaking Milwaukee, which is just like that. You beer. only think of beer. Chicago is a big drinking town. I don't know if Cleveland's known as being a big drinking town. I feel like the Midwest is just a drinking place in general, but definitely Milwaukee screams drinking. When you think Midwest, you think Milwaukee. So <laughs> I will yeah. I will throw this out there that the Midwest drinks so much beer that Bush made cans for supporting the farmers. Yeah. And everyone knows where the farmers are. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you're on to something there, Ray. Yeah. They know their so, target market. Absolutely. And you know what? Bought a lot of those cans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, support, what else? I support America's I... farms. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few little interesting food items to share with you guys. Mm. Okay. So when we were in New York, I went to this really cool place with my cousins and now the name is escaping me, but essentially it was this building and it had different vendors in it that all the products kind of switched out and they were these new innovative products that people, you know, haven't really heard about. And one of them that we tried was this company called Eatable. I don't know if it, I think it's pronounced Eatable because it's E-A-T-A-B-L-E. And it is popcorn that's infused with alcohol. So when I was there, the lady told me that if you ate a bag of the popcorn, it would give you a light buzz. But then I went on their website and they say that it doesn't. So I don't know, she must have like lied to us. <laughs> well, I'm confused as to why you would infuse the popcorn with alcohol if it didn't. What would be it's the purpose? The it's for the flavor. So it started by this husband and wife team and they label themselves as health conscious foodies. So they were always wanting like a snack and a drink and they didn't want to have a snack and a drink and have all the calories and everything and the sugar and everything that comes with having a snack and a drink. And so they decided to combine their favorite snack, which was popcorn and beverages so the popcorn flavors are like a perfect pairing of a classic snack and a drink to go with it. And it's free of all of these things, high fructose corn syrup, palm oil, vanilla and caramel color, confectioners, glaze, titanium dioxide, these things that are nasty that are typically found in snacks. And so they created a really healthy snack that kind of curbs that appetite of having a drink and having a snack. And I will say, I tried a lot of them. I tried the whiskey and it's like caramel corn whiskey. So good. The champagne one is so good. It's like a white chocolate champagne. And then on the popcorn are pop rocks. So when you eat it, it like pops in your mouth. <laughs> so good. And then there was another rosé one that was just fine. And I really wanted to try the margarita one which is like a limey salty flavor but they were out of it but I thought it was really cool definitely not what I I originally thought that you would get a buzz because that's what the lady told us at the store but maybe she was just mistaken but either way it's a really cool innovative snack idea for uh maybe if you want to give like a gift to somebody or you just want to buy it for yourself something I would be interested in about that would be to see the nutritional facts because if you're infusing the drink into the popcorn and you eat the same amount wouldn't you be getting the same amount of each drink the drink and the popcorn so wouldn't it be the same well so <laughs> they say <laughs> that it, that? it burns off in the like in the process of cooking it okay well, and also they're probably not infusing the entire drink into the popcorn they're probably just infusing the flavor so it's probably not a full for example if you were doing old-fashioned popcorn you probably wouldn't infuse an entire old-fashioned into the popcorn right you i never I don't know. know yeah you never well, know 
I'll true. say this. They would definitely fall upon how much you eat. Yeah. Because if you throw a bag of caramel corn in front of me, it would be dangerous. Yeah. Because I, I love caramel corn. <laughs> I agree. It could get it could get crazy. And Kate, you showed me this after we went to New York, and I, I really want to try it. It looks awesome. It is a little bit of a bummer that you were lied to about the buzz part. I was looking forward to eating popcorn and getting a buzz just to say that I've done it. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, hey, that, you, you can't win them all. That's all right. I have a couple more. We're running up on time, but I just want to kind of fly through these real quick. I came. I found a couple of them because after this, I was kind of on the hunt to find actual alcohol infused snacks. And the only two things I could find after a lot of research was one of them is called Tipsy Scoop. And it is also in New York. It was founded by a woman named Melissa Tavs, Tavs, and her great, great, great grandfather actually start moved from Italy to Scotland and founded an ice cream parlor. And the family business continued for generations until she, it ended. And then I think a, a few decades later, she picked it up and decided to infuse the ice cream with alcohol. And this will actually get you drunk. So it's, well, if you drink, if you eat enough of it, it's 5% ABV per pint. So if you eat a whole pint of ice cream, it's 5%, which is what? Similar to a beer? Yeah. yeah. Similar to a beer. I think I've had Tipsy Scoop. I think Shu maybe bought it. Someone a while back had tipsy scoop and i've definitely had it before and it's good we uh we went to it wasn't tipsy scoop but we went to um where was it in chicago that was that had alcoholic ice cream as well hmm really trying to yeah we did we went uh i believe it was two years ago i don't Mm. remember that but i'll look it up i will bring that with me (laughs) yeah yeah bring that because yeah, I don't remember, but that's true. Kate and I don't eat ice cream, so uh, that could possibly be the issue. We went to the zoo, and we went and got that ice cream. And I remember you had ice cream that night, and it was an issue. What? <laughs> well, then it wasn't two years ago. But, Kate, what's the other, uh, before we run out of time here, what's the other product that you found? Okay, so Cardi B has a whipped cream company that has alcohol. So it's whipped cream shots. It's full. It's a can of whipped cream founded by Cardi B. It's all over the website. It's called Whip Shots and it's 10% ABV vodka based. And they've got three different flavors, mocha, caramel, and vanilla. And I was like shocked that Cardi B was the one that had founded this company. 10% alcohol. You get smoked if you just eat the whole thing of whipped cream. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. And also on hot chocolate, on coffee, Bring on the Cardi B whipped cream. Let's go. <laughs> that sounds could you, amazing. Could you imagine a hot chocolate with Bailey's and then this Cardi B whipped cream? It would be oh, the vanilla or the caramel. Yeah, that'd so be sick. Good. Before we before I let Kate run us out of here in the spirit of products, we can't spend any time on this. Have you guys seen that Sunny D has created a seltzer? I have not. They've gone too far, people. They've gone too far. <laughs> the, the commercials from our childhood, the Sunny D commercials that gave us all of the hope and lightness or light in our life, they've destroyed it. Kate, take us out of here. That's all I have to say about it. All right. Stay tuned for more on that conversation in the next episode. <laughs> Absolutely. I have things to say. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for listening. Make sure to subscribe and uh, subscribe to our YouTube, subscribe to the podcast, and make sure to follow us at We Are Social Drinkers on all the social media channels. And we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.